And that brings us to the story we've been bringing you since last year, the lab leak theory. For more than a year now, we've been reporting on this. For almost a month now, the world has been waking up to it. There is growing circumstantial evidence against the Wuhan lab in China and growing consensus on why it needs to be investigated further. American intelligence officials are investigating. It is believed that this lab was conducting risky research into bat coronaviruses. And this is not the first such case. Viruses have leaked from Chinese labs in the past, so the lab leak theory cannot be dismissed just yet. But let's take it one step further. Have you ever wondered how many such laboratories exist in China? How many such facilities are there in the world? Such labs that conduct dangerous experiments with viruses? What's the possibility of another deadly virus leaking from another lab? Why do these labs exist? How safe are we from lab leaks? Over the past few days, we did some research, we spoke to some experts and also found some assessments. And we can tell you that the results paint a rather scary picture. The Wuhan lab is not an exception. There are several such labs in the world. They are in urban centers and they're prone to leaks. Let me show you something. Look carefully at this map. Our world today has as many as 59 such laboratories, 59. And this list includes labs that are currently operational, the ones that are under construction, and the projects that are still in the planning stage. 59 of them, they're spread across 23 countries. Here's a breakdown. The largest concentration of such labs is in Europe. They have 25 of them. In these countries, Belarus, the Czech Republic, France, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Sweden, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. Russia, too, has one such lab. The next major concentration is in North America. This region has 14 laboratories. They're split between the US and Canada. The United States has 12 labs. Canada has two. Asia has 13 labs in all. They're in China, Japan, South Korea, Singapore, and Taiwan. China has three of them. India, too, has three such labs. What about West Asia? Only one such lab in West Asia. It's in Saudi Arabia. Australia has four labs. Africa has three labs. One each in South Africa, Gabon, and Côte d'Ivoire. So no major region is without a high security lab, a quote unquote high security lab. These are biosafety level four labs, also called BSL4, biosafety level four. This is the highest security classification, level four. It means that these labs can be used to study dangerous viruses and pathogens, disease causing organisms. But here's a question. Are these labs equipped to handle dangerous research? Do they have the safety standards in place to ensure such viruses do not leak? Who is regulating them? Do they all follow similar safety protocols? The short answer to all these questions is no. And scientists are raising red flags, have been raising red flags for a while. There are three clear reasons why scientists the world over are worried. Number one, security is a problem in most of these laboratories. Number two, most of these labs are in urban centers in highly populated areas. And number three, most countries do not have clear laws to regulate risky research. Let's take them one by one. First of all, security. Look at this assessment on your screen. It is by Nonprofit Nuclear Threat Initiative. And this is what it says, only six countries out of the 23 that we just mentioned, only six countries have high levels of biosafety preparedness. Six out of 23. These labs are the most secure. These include countries like the United States and the United Kingdom. Then we have labs in 11 countries which have quote unquote a medium rating. This means a lax or weak security arrangement. Chinese labs are in this category. And then we have five countries with low levels of security. This list includes South Africa. So security is a concern. The second issue is the location of such laboratories. They're in urban centers. And they could directly put large populations at risk. 75% of all labs in the world are located in urban centers, which means higher risk of infection traveling wider. It also means a large number of people may get infected in case of a leak. Problem number three, regulation or the lack of it. Just three out of 23 countries that host these high security labs have serious oversight. 
Let me explain this. A big concern is the military use of highly secure labs. Are they only doing research? Or are they creating potential bioweapons? Who is going to check this? Just three countries have oversight on research and its potential military use. They have laws which regulate research and its potential use for making weapons. Which are these countries? Again, the United States and the United Kingdom are two of them. The European Union also has specific laws in place. What about the rest? There is little clarity on regulation in the other countries on this list. So is there any global rule book, any international law that dictates the rules for the safety of these labs? Yes, technically there is. All countries with BSL-4 labs, biosafety level 4 labs, have international obligations to follow. Now 22 of these countries must comply with the Biological Weapons Convention. The 23rd on the list is Taiwan. It is not internationally recognized as a country, so it is not part of this list. Now, the Biological Weapons Convention bans the development and possession of biological weapons. Under this treaty, countries must self-declare their biosafety and biosecurity laws. They must self-report information about laboratories, which sounds like the most effective framework ever. Countries self-declaring, don't they always do so? Don't they always come clean on their virus research and lab leaks? The current regulatory framework is as good as none. It offers no guarantee that safety standards and best practices are being followed anywhere in the world. What does all of this tell you? Another lab leak is very much a possibility. And we have everything in place to ensure that. And this is not a hypothetical threat of bioweapons. Look at some instances in the past. In 2001, an attacker killed five people by sending anthrax through mail in the United States. And it is believed that this anthrax was stolen from a laboratory. More recent lab escapes have come from China. In the year 2004, nine people were infected with SARS. This is after two researchers in Beijing were exposed to it. They were working on the SARS virus inside a lab. One person even died due to this accidental leak. And then in November 2019, just before the beginning of this pandemic, 6,000 people were infected with brucellosis. That's after a leak at a vaccine plant in northwestern China. Now, despite all these security concerns, China is still aggressively pursuing more such labs. Last month, China's Guangdong province announced plans to build 25 to 30 level 3 labs. This is one province, 25 to 30 level 3 labs and one top level BSL lab, the high security lab, in the next five years. It seems one leaky lab in Wuhan is not enough. One province in China wants more than 30 new labs. We often talk about an arms race, we talk about a nuclear race, but look at this. Such labs pose a major risk to the safety and security of all humankind. And despite this pandemic, governments have shown no urgency to address these risks. So here's the question we began with. Who is going to keep these labs under check? Who is going to ensure transparency and scrutiny? And we'll keep reporting this until we get answers. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.